is a, a part of my DNA, you know, um, part of it from difficult aspects of my childhood. You know, I, I grew up with violence in my home, you know, so um, I developed, you know, a really acute emotional sense, you know, out of defense. You know, I just needed to make sure that my father was okay. I needed to make sure things were going well. And I just became really hypersensitive um, to emotional movement in a room as a, as a defense mechanism. And then as I, you know, grew and as I started to uh, develop that, you know, that heightened sense that started out as defense as I settled down and, you know, came into uh, a, a deeper understanding of my, my, uh, my power and my desires in the world, it was easier to connect to people in a loving way. It, it, trans, it transferred easily from a defense mechanism to an ability to love and, and care for people. There's always uh, an aspect of us that when we feel unloved, you know, in any capacity, in any relationship, when we feel unloved, uh, when we feel mistreated, when we feel uh, somehow disrespected, um, it's a natural reaction to want revenge. And I think that's what happens with most people, specifically in our, in our most vulnerable stages when we're children. And we haven't done anything to deserve that kind of treatment. Um, it's really hard for the ego to not click into revenge, you know? And, you know, once I discovered that, that mechanism, once I saw that, that like that, that most of us walk around with. Yeah. That, you know, we, we want revenge against that mistreatment. It's a little piece of that with all of us. So the problem is that when you seek revenge, you destroy yourself. And that's the, um, that, that's the paradoxical conflict that we all live in. Someone has mistreated us. We want revenge, but if we take it, we hurt ourselves more. You know, so that is the, uh, as Radhanath Swami referred to, the perplexing situation that we find ourselves in. And the, the, the only answer is loving kindness. And most of us don't want to hear that. It's like, take my chances with revenge. For me, I had such a beautiful example of loving kindness in my grandmother when, when I was growing up. I always knew I wanted to be that, the way that she loved and cared for people. Um, I didn't realize that her giving was connected to her peace. That was something that, that I got a, a concept of later. But I always knew that that was my example, and I think that's the critical part. We need we need an example. Somebody has to be an example. Human beings are uh, creatures of example. We need we you got to see it. Yeah. You know. So uh, th that's really where I am in my life right now. I I want to uh, show what it looks like to be loving and kind and giving and forgiving. Um, and and I, I just wanna, I wanna model those virtues as best I can. There was a real period in my life that I had to, to struggle with, we can win or I can be nice. Mm -hmm. Pick one, <laughs> right? And different people pick different things. For the type of material world climbing, you know, that, that I did for a, a big chunk of my life, um, it was military minded. You know, we're gonna get that flag to the top of that hill and you are gonna help or you're not gonna be here. 
right? So that's, that's one mindset. And then after I got the flag to the hill a couple of times, it kept getting the flag to the hill and realized that you just, you don't feel good and you've scorched earth around you and you're like, no, nobody's really happy, you know? And then I started to have to question that mindset. You know, I had one of the greatest runs in Hollywood history, you know? That eight number one movies all over a hundred domestic, biggest global movie star, all of that, and my family was miserable, you know? And I had equated winning with happiness. And the, the transition from product focus, like military-minded, get to the top of that hill, and then I shifted into a, a mindset. And it was really my kids who brought me out of that. I, I shift into discovering, like, well, damn, people really care about how they feel. You know, my, my father wasn't concerned with how I felt, you know? He wasn't concerned with how he felt. He was military-minded. You achieved the mission. And there's two possibilities. When I give you a mission, there's two possibilities. One, you complete the mission. Or two, you're dead, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and that's what my father was saying. I grew up with that. Oh, cool, right? I actually had to discover feelings, right? And start like, I used to have to really focus on, okay, how's this person feel? How's this person feel? Not what do I need them to do? And not they're wasting our time right now and we're losing time and we're gonna not finish this mission, right? But there's a, there is a balance between the mindset of achieving and loving kindness that at this point in my life, I've actually discovered the magical balance, but it's really hard to get people to let go of the attack and defend achievement mindset and trust the care and concern for your fellow humans as a way of creating higher production. You can learn something from the extremes also, right? Yeah. And when you, when you look at um, the athletes, right? There's a certain extreme mindset that you, I was gonna say you have to take on. I don't know that you have to take it on. What I do know is that in this society, um, we worship that mindset that, um, you know, it's the, 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 can you become Michael Jordan without that mindset? You know, and that is a, that is a really powerful, difficult question. It's like, m most people can't sustain the mindset that, you know, fortunately, because it's, <laughs> it can be so destructive, but most people can't sustain that level of discipline to manifest the things that they want in, in their life. And there's just a, there's a poisonous edge to that kind of discipline. And I've been to the edge of that kind of material world discipline in my mind. And I can tell you, you can have a whole lot of stuff and be miserable out there on that edge. And I found a much more comfortable uh, and productive space in my life. And you still need that discipline. Yes. But it, it, it's like when, you're, when you use that kind of power to achieve things, it's like there's a uh, there's a there's a, 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 a brutal reckoning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a brutal reckoning at the at the end of that.